Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Pastors. Pastors. Of pain. Pastors. Pain. Pain. Pastors. Pain County, Oklahoma Pastors. is where Pastors. we live. Pain. And... Uh, and we evangelize. We evangelize. We share the good news of Jesus Christ. And we're, in, and, we're, and we're all in pain. No. That is... It's Easter. County. It's Easter. No pain. No pain. Jesus is risen. Um, so the last two episodes, one of us has not been here. We are, though, reunited... One and or it twin feels powers. So good. Activate. Um, so two with two episodes ago, Father Kerry did a, a glorious interview <sighs> with a lovely, lovely engaged couple, uh, Kayla Cuba and uh, Clay Furley, and they're getting married J- June, Juneish. I, yeah, I I'm don't going. Know. You're the celebrant. It's yes. on my. It's on my calendar. You're the celebrant. I'm going to con celebrate. Right. Uh, yeah, make sure. Make sure that you spell Clay Furley's name correct. If you are E L I G H. Oh, it is? Um, yeah. I prob- we probably spelled it I, wrong. You've misspelled it three times <laughs> in three different occasions, but not the same misspelling. It, one, on one time, it was F U R L E. Maybe he should change his last name to Cuba. Oh, and Then we cool. wouldn't have a problem. And then people would put I know accents how to spell on Cuba. it. Um, and then last week, uh, we had a special guest. Uh, Who? And that was a Jacob Farney. The children's minister <laughs> of, uh, I spelled that right, uh, the children's minister of St. Francis Xavier. We talked a seminarian. About, we talked about, he was a seminarian for Oklahoma City, and now is our children's minister, and it's rocking. We talked about the summer, uh, our evangelization summer, and kids' activities, and all kinds of okay. cool things. But now, we're back. Now, the reason, sometimes, I think I mentioned this last week, sometimes when, when one of us isn't here, it's not because... It's 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 usually it's a scheduling issue. That yeah. one of I had a funeral, uh, time just times don't. I, always, had a, I had a building meeting. Yeah, times don't always work out, or we have like a set time that we're going to record, and then something blows up in our face, and then we say, "It's it's ju- it's you, it's not just, me." Yeah, it's just, you, it's not just, me. Just bring somebody and record an episode, and uh-huh. let's keep moving. And Jay gets entertained by them so exactly, and it gives us a chance to kind of you know spread the spread the love. So one thing that was very interesting when uh, you had a Clay and Kayla on to talk about their um, engagement and dating uh-huh. and all kinds of stuff. Um, somebody uh, on my uh, on my Facebook page. They had obviously not listened to the episode. They just saw the title of it, which was, I forget what it was, but anyway. And basically the person says, you know, what, I'm paraphrasing, but basically what business do priests have giving relationship advice? And they hadn't listened to it, and then they, they didn't realize it. it was a engaged couple. But I also kind of said, you know, even if, even if it wasn't an interview <coughs> with an engaged couple, we give relationship advice. They were making yeah. the old the old argument of like you don't know anything. You're you're celibate priests, and therefore you have nothing to say about marriage and family. Yeah, um, but when when in fact and I said uh, we do 17 weddings a year well, and do marriage preparation with all these couples. I so. said between the two of us, we're we've been priests between the two of us 25 years, and we've we got know, some prepared data. hundreds, literally hundreds of couples yeah. for marriage, and so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Say that. Put the dukes up. Uh, put the dukes. The okay, so boxing. it's uh, give, give us a little, uh, give maybe a little, a little. Uh, how's your 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 building project? So it's now uh, it's now the month of May. Uh, things are give us uh, give us the ninety second. Uh, the ninety second is at the, uh, this building is set for demolition on the June, current St. John's June one, and the groundbreaking is Saturday June. 19th is the groundbreaking yeah, at 11 a.m. I need to write that down. Yeah, write Talk it about down. something while I write that down. Uh, it, uh, we're, uh, we're handing off the uh, the keys to Manhattan Construction. What time? What time is that happening? May 14th. May 14th? No, the May 19th. 14th at what Giant time? Keys. The 19th at what? Uh, at 11. 11 at at the at St. John. And we're going to dig some, put some shovels in the ground. Uh, do the uh, old dedication. I'm not gonna the late. dedication. I'm going to be late. The consecration. The b- uh, bereavement. No, what is that called? What's it called when you? Is he gonna bless the ground? Yeah, yeah, bless the ground. That oh, kind okay. of thing. Well, I think the ground's bishop's already. Bishop's bl- coming. Yeah, bishop's gonna be here. Well, hell, hell. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's coming along, and we're. I have mo- a wedding at one. How long is this gonna be? It's gonna be about five minutes plus snacks. <laughs> 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 five oh. minutes plus some uh, some sliders. They're gonna be donuts and uh, donuts and mojitos. Sliders? 
I don't know. I'm just making stuff up now. I'm saying things, saying words just to fill time. Wow. So it's going to okay. be a nice little event. That's but awesome. if you backtrack a couple of weeks, like uh, the end of April, we're going to be getting all the stuff out of the building. May 10th, 11th, and 12th. Uh, sorry, 11th and 12th, St. Francis, uh, no, St. Bridget in Tahlequah yep. has a mission of St. Juan Diego in Stillwell, not Stillwater, Stillwell, which is right on the Arkansas border. And they're taking out the altar, the baptismal font, the pews, the cross, the the, the uh, statues I love of that. Mary and Joseph. I love that. And they're taking all that stuff over to Stillwell, which will save them probably hundred and fifty thousand dollars so it's amazing yeah i think some people think when a church is going away they're like <laughs> oh we'll just take the altar and throw it in the trash and oh no oh you put it in a new church oh no and yeah. we're not we're not yeah. putting it in a new church it's called stewardship yeah and so father Stewart, <gasps> stewardship is is taking he was the former pastor of st john so he's taking all the goods yep and uh ziggler well uh ziggler's was just out here a couple weeks ago and they were looking through and figuring out how to get it all out of the building so it's uh love it, love it. So uh, we're okay. Uh, we got the the bishops got the got the contract signed and oh yeah, it's uh out to bid and Sweet, sassy, people are now calling lassie. and saying, hey, uh, we would like and I say, there's this guy named Steve Cooper in Oklahoma City, Cooper Contractors, call him and they're like, but what I'd do like they to want? Talk- they want to they want to like build stuff. They want to sell us stuff. They oh. just yeah. The words on the street yeah, is that we're over. building a twenty four million dollar church. Oh, I see. Yeah, the city of Stillwater loves it. We um, we met with the city council. What's not to love? I know, that's one of their own. Okay, that's so. great. That's great. Good work. Hey, so yeah. So. so if you have questions about the building project, uh, yeah, call Father Kerry. Look at their web. Buildingsaints.com is still yep. up and active. You can still donate. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. All that stuff. That's great. That's great. It's so we'll yeah we'll keep you posted as we have all uh-huh. along the uh-huh. way. And then we're, 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 there's this really generous other priest in town. His name let's go with his name is Brian O. Wait wait that's too obvious. B O'Brien. We'll call him B O'Brien. And he's letting us rent out his uh, church and offices because they're currently like I mean they're running air conditioning and insurance and we're just gonna we're gonna pay you those bills as we crank up the bills on That'll them. That'll be and, we'll probably have to maybe over the summer I think we'll probably do, need to do a show on how that's all gonna work logistically. Are people gonna really like that? Because uh, I think my my people will be interested to know that the the old church. Which has been in use this whole time, the basement by Catholic Charities, yeah, and the upstairs by our local uh, Russian Orthodox community. Um, that St. John's is gonna is gonna use it, um, which will be which will be pretty awesome. Uh, but exactly, you know how that's gonna work. I mean, so one one example is that we're gonna have, um, <coughs> in all likelihood, St. John's is gonna have. A couple masses at the old church, and then is also going to have a mass at the new church. Yeah, due to size and lack of appropriate kitchen space. Uh, because when you're dealing with college students, you got to feed them. Uh huh. You got to uh-huh. feed them. Indeed. So um, just just one big event happening May second. May second at noon. May second at noon is the is the last chance for. Uh, for former St. John parishioners who want to come back, actually, uh, a couple weeks ago. So that's this. This show is going to air on the last Friday. Yeah. So this will be on the radio this on May second. Okay, it'll be on the radio on May second. So, so if you're hearing this and you're like, I want to go to Mass at St. John, May second at noon is your is your last yep. chance. You're listening to this at Sunday Mass, nine thirty. You have two hours to get dressed. Yeah. Get on. Get on over. That's uh, great. Yeah. We're um, we're. We're, uh, we have special guest priests showing up and all sorts of good stuff. Giddy up. There will be clowns. There will be clowns. I'm just Clown kidding. Clown mass. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. This is not actually the topic of our show. It's not? It's not. Oh, Although okay. we just, we always like to keep everybody um, informed. We have, we have gotten lately, it's actually been quite wonderful, many, many, many listeners of, a, of the several hundred people that we know of that listen to the show every week. Okay. Because we don't know exactly how many people listen on the radio. Whether here on 90, Pete ninety four point three or on uh, Oklahoma Catholic Radio, we don't know how many people listen. Millions, uh, perhaps millions, perhaps. Um, people send us topics. They don't send me topics. People send me topics. <laughs> so, for example, we did that show a couple weeks ago on "Is the Devil Real?" Okay, and we got some good got good feedback. Heard oh, some, wow. from some people. So, somebody asked for 
a show, even though it's the Easter season. I think this is an appropriate topic. And the top, so what I'd like to, us to discuss <coughs> from our perspective as priests, what do you do when you're sad? Eat chocolate. So <laughs> uh, there are a lot of people, COVID okay. has really affected people okay. emotionally, okay. psychologically, spiritually. Um, that can be their own isolation. That can be illness and death. Mm-hmm. Um, just in our just in our little parish here in good old Stillwater, we had nine COVID funerals. Oh wow! In addition to other people who died of other things as uh-huh. normal during the regular year, um, I think in your world, um, COVID has you know caused some isolation, uh, strained relationships. But I also think you have a lot of students that are about to graduate. Or maybe transfer, or you know, in some sort of state of transition, and there's a lot of uncertainty, and that leads to unhappiness, sadness. Mm-hmm. So, what does the church? What what would we say? What do we what do we say to someone who's sad? Besides chocolate, besides chocolate, Saint Thomas Aquinas would actually say the first remedy to sadness is to give yourself something that you like. Yes. You, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you uh, give us give us I'm gonna some, give you uh, give just an exa- wisdom. Just give you an example. My 30 day silent retreat. I, we we were um, <laughs> it's 30 days. It's silence, and then you get like there's you know at day 10 you actually get to talk, and day like you know eight days after that you get to talk, and then you you know it's all these retreats and there's these little broken up moments. And our spiritual director, Father uh, Ray Goronsky, uh, rest in peace, uh, Society of Jesus, he had uh, this little line. And he said, every time I go on a retreat, I take a couple things with me that are kickstarters of joy, such as chocolate. I take gardening tools with me. 80s rap. 80s rap music, is that what you said? Yeah. Is there anything more joyful than... than 80s rap music than listening to huh? okay all right sorry continue whatever LL Cool J is that what you're Uncle L Future of the Funk <laughs> okay go ahead sorry <laughs> but it, but that, that's that's what he said you all need to take things along like you know sometimes pictures so just things that reignite joy because uh, what happens in those in those moments of sadness we don't know like sometimes we don't know how we get there. Yeah, and, I think and, that's a big problem for people. Like, how did I? I used to be happy, right? And now I'm sad, and now I don't know how to get out of it. So I, I there was a couple like a couple moments on a on a 30 day silent retreat where you're running into these encounters with your life <coughs> and the way you failed God and the you know the sins you've committed and oh. the injuries you've incurred upon yourself and just being stupid uh, throughout your kind of history of being a human being, mm-hmm. and you sit with them, and you sit with them in the misery. And so this is what he taught us. He's like, sit with them in the misery. Like, you have done these things. You have committed these sins. This is the way it's affected your life. Sit with them and, like, look at them. But don't look at them too long. Because if you look at them too long, you'll focus on them rather on the grace of the oh. Lord Jesus Christ. And then you ask the Lord Jesus, pour your precious blood upon these things. Pour your precious blood upon these things and allow me to see like your love, your divine love yeah, through Lord, through my brokenness and yeah, through my sin. Yeah. And so th- that's why the crucifix is always important in Catholic art and architecture and also in our faith. Because not only do we look at a, we come encounter our sins, but then we look at the love of Jesus Christ on the cross and we like, yes, not only did he die for us, but he suffered for us. So that's one that's one way. Then the mourning process. There, there was this, uh, just a couple things he, like they taught us uh, about mourning loss of things, like the thing that is that will never be again. That which what was, which will never be again, as Archbishop Shapu wrote in his book on, I think it was on the Beatitudes. Oh. It is a, like this, uh, this thing occurred and it will never be again. It once was, and it'll never be again. So to be able to... you got to acknowledge it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Blessed are those who mourn the Beatitude says. And I just like... So I, that can be a breakup. Yeah. Okay, we used to go out. 
and now we don't. And even if you were the one who broke up. I was always doing the breaking you up. Still, you still, that's a loss to be mourned. I have found this in my own life. You know, I've never been married or whatever, I, you know, but I, you know, people in my life who have died. But then also like moving. I found like there's times, you know, when I moved to Stillwater, for all of the joy that came with it of, wow, what a, this beautiful place and wonderful people. I get to live with you. What, me? Uh, uh, <laughs> the, you know, I, but I left something behind. You know, you, you left the University of Tulsa five years ago. And that you had spent, you had poured your life. I watched right. you. You poured your life into that place. And then one day you move. Like, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard leaving those people behind. Unfinished projects. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think especially like people l- maybe lose their job. That is something to be mourned. Even if you like leave your job for a new job that's better paying and you got a promotion and you're, there's, you're leaving things behind. Well, it's, it's friendships. Graduating. Like friendships. Like yeah. you went, I mean, like the example. I like do. You, I miss people. I do. I miss people in Like Tulsa. you make friends with people over, how many years were you in Tulsa? 10? 12. 12 yeah. years in Tulsa, both yeah. at Bishop Kelly as a teacher, as a all seminarian. In, I mean, yeah, all in. 20. 20. And so you make yeah. these incredible friendships and then you move out to... I'm not. I'm not telling his friends of the world, but I mean, this is what happens. You move out to Stillwater, and people are like, "Oh, it's an hour and a half that way." Yeah, yeah. And so there is that like, mourning I'm process. Come see you all the time. No, you won't. No, you're not. That's what college students say. <laughs> okay, they come back. Oh, I'll be back. No, you, no, you won't. won't. No. no, you'll come back for a game, let's and you'll just, be at the end of the tailgate. Let's just shake hands and be done with it. <laughs> so yeah, losses to be losses to be mourned. Yeah, more mourning. Uh, not just th- with death. And I think that's the misconception that mourning mm, right. is something related to death. But in a sense, like, okay, I left Tulsa and moved to Stillwater. There was right. a death. I had to die. I had to die to Tulsa. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. think my, some of my mourning processes is when I have, stu- like, I have students and you're working with them and you become friends with them and then they just disappear. Yep. Ghosted. And yeah, you get ghosted, but but it I, it hurts more to the core. Spiritually ghosted because you're like, what did I do something wrong like, here? I invested in you, yeah, and I've committed time and energy Sucker. and love, and and you you also emotions get in there. Yep. So I think also the like the the danger opposite side is you become you can become calloused. Mm. You can be just like, okay, well, I'm not going to invest any emotion into this because I know I'll that never all love these- again. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but it is. I mean, it's love. It's not. It's not romantic love. It's no. not. You know. But it's the four loves. I love you. I love you, and therefore I'm going to give you of my my time and my my life. I'm going to share my life with you, and so yeah. When that's either not reciprocated or is sort of mm-hmm. seen to be like not appreciated. Wow. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So mourning, mourning the loss, mourn the loss. Maybe not a death, but mm-hmm. something has changed that has brought about some sadness. You gotta go out. I, I I love the phrase. I don't know where it came from. It's not biblical, but it's theological, and that is that the way the way out is through. Correct. Yes. We so often our culture, I think, would have us sort of try to go around something. The way out is go. Just go around it. Don't deal with it. Just avoid it. That's not. That's not gonna work. The way out is through. So if you have a loss to be mourned, if you're if there's sadness, what what are you sad about? And let's let's correct. Let's go through it. We go through it. I, I mean, like uh, just even the loss. Uh, I'll use you as an example f- with your parents. When was you saw your parents? Oh when? yeah, I went a year and a half without seeing them. And you the see flesh. them like every six months normally. Yeah. And so what was that process? I mean, how how was that? Oh, I remember. I mean, what for me when I did not, I was going to go see my parents. Oh, at, yes. at Thanksgiving. And and it didn't work. COVID was still raging. Um, my parents were being very careful. I was be trying to be careful, you know, to take care of my people here. And what I thought was going to be a trip to Houston for Thanksgiving, it, it didn't. It didn't happen. And it was, I was, yeah, I was sad. Uh, I and my parents were sad. And we, one of the good things is I, with my parents, we were able to together like talk about. That we were sad. 
And then I shared it. You know, I mean, I shared it with like our priest group. I uh, shared it with you. I shared it with some with some other friends. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm sad. And to just to share that, and I think that's something. That's another way. What you know? What do you do when you're sad? Share it. Yeah. Share it with somebody. What is like com- the word compassion, which we use a lot. Compassion means to suffer with. Compassion. Yeah. And so if, if somebody is hurting and they share that with me, I now, I've been brought in. I've now been sort of brought into their, their hurting. I have compassion for them. I can suffer with right. them. It didn't happen to me, but I love them and they're hurting. And so now I'm going to, you know, yeah. help them. It's also like with that, with communicating, it's, uh, you know, if, a, if, if I was sitting there watching TV and you walked into the living room and I'm watching a, you know, a basketball game and you're like, you sit down and you're kind of like sad and you're like, yeah, I can't go to Houston. I'm like, I'm sorry, what'd you say? And I turn up the volume. I'm like, like, I'm trying to watch this. Excuse it's, me. This is, it's getting really dramatic on Shark Tank right now. <laughs> <laughs> can you, can you wait for a commercial? Can you wait for a commercial? It's. You, you know, with that, with sadness is to know, like know a friend you can go in and be like, hey, I need to talk to you about something. Yep. And you can like mute. like At mute. the very least, mute it. <laughs> but keep texting, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, you can still text. You can still tweet, actively tweet. Like I get, I'm tweeting. My like, friend is sharing a sad story with me right now. Stay tuned. Keep the thread going. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? But he's, it, he's right. You know, he's crying. Ooh, no, <laughs> now he's yelling at me. <laughs> Now he's eating a lot of chocolate. <laughs> yes. Here's a picture. <laughs> yeah. So share it with someone. What do you do in your morning? That's great. So a couple of things, a couple of pieces of advice we've thrown out so far. The way out is through. Yep. Um, you got to mourn the loss. Uh huh. Um, you got to share it with someone. So now maybe maybe part of your sadness is loneliness, and you don't have anyone to share it with. One, I would say that's where the church can come in. Um, we see a lot people come to us as priests. Because they don't really feel like they have anyone else to go to. That's one of the roles of the church. Right. We want to be there for people who are hurting and, and maybe they don't have anywhere to go. And that the church is everyone's home. <laughs> and so they can come. Yeah? Yeah. I'm, I'm is la- this true? It right. is true. You're it's, laughing? I'm laughing because uh, my buddy who's a psychiatrist, <laughs> we were sitting in his tree house. He built a tree house because he needs time to relax. Every psychiatrist should build a good He tree built house. a tree house. And we were sitting up in this giant tree house having, having a cold beer. And he says, you know, I hate priests. And I said, why is that, Doc? He goes, well, you know, I make a lot of money off people. Oh, they we co- take their business. Yeah. Well, they, he comes, they, he says, I'll get somebody and I'll spend a year talking to them and they'll finally open up. And he says, what I don't like about priests is this, Father, is that they come and talk to you and they spill the beans the first 30 seconds. Like they just lay it yeah, out. Yeah, we don't, people don't, yeah. We don't need a big setup time. Uh, yeah, I mean the the setup time is people just come in. And <laughs> the setup time is hey, you got ten minutes. Which or the mean, setup time is bless me, Father, for I've. <laughs> That's the setup. <laughs> it's been five years since my last confession. Yeah, and out it comes. And, and that's like it's he awesome. says. He says what they have in the depths of their hearts, they're afraid to tell anybody. They sit down with a priest and they just talk about it. Yeah. Or whatever's going on, they and talk good. about it. And good. That's yeah. what that's and th- part of what we're it's not all we do, but that's one of the things we do. So sharing that life. So I would also recommend, you know, I recommend to people all the time. There's things as a as priests, we're not qualified. I mean, you can talk to us about anything, of course, but there's things that we're not qualified. We were always taught in seminary, like when somebody has a has an issue that that maybe is better for a counselor. To try to, as a priest, to kind of get them as far as you can, listen to them, mm-hmm. and and you know, but then they might need professional help. Yeah, even like financial debt. Like I'm, I'm not going to help you balance your books. Yeah, you but I can give you, you a great accountant. Us. We're I can, okay. Yeah. I could call a buddy of mine who's accountant and be like, "Hey, this you, guy is really yep. deep. Can you help him out and do me a favor?" So there's times when sadness, when the appropriate response to sadness is professional counseling. Yeah, and we recommend it. We really do. Well, well, look um, at the Bishop of Lincoln, Nebraska. Yes. I mean, he's an example. Like, he, he was... He went through... I don't know what... I mean, I don't want to speculate, but like, you know, there, it seemed like... It depression. Was like, almost like clinical depression. Yeah. And he took a leave as a bishop. And I, I really think that was like sort of the... Among priests, there was like a, kind of a heavy talk about that and not as like, oh my gosh, he's so... He's weak. 
it was like good for him. Indeed. Good for him. He recognized a real issue in his personal life and and he got help. He took I don't know, it was whatever it was, a leave of absence or sabbatical mm-hmm. or whatever that was. Um, I remember kind of, yeah, being like, good for him. He, and he coached me through my thesis I'm proud when I was of writing. In, uh, he was our him. auxiliary bishop in yeah. Denver, Bishop and now James Conley. He yeah. got a, whatever it was, he kind of worked through it. The way out is through. The yeah, way the out way out is through. Is through. And, and it's um, also in this, in, in sadness, is don't be ashamed about it. There, there is that, that kind of shame or... Yeah, you want to hide it. Yeah. Um, but we would say, you know, the, the light, especially the light, the light of Jesus, the light of Jesus Christ, whether in the confessional, whether in, in counseling, it'll help you is to not, not, don't bury it, bring it, right. Bring it to the light appropriately. You know, it's not, if if your sadness, I don't think is best shared on Facebook. No, you know, um, that's the worst. It's not. Um, Yeah. I mean. There's a place, you know, if somebody dies in your life to be able to say, you know, hey, this person died. Okay. But to really, if you're going to really work through something, um, bring it, yeah, bring it to the light. Bring it to the Lord. I love the phrase that we heard this a couple weeks ago from a priest. Uh, you know, have you oh, have yes. you talked to the Father? Say that again. This guy, we had this priest, Father Paul Hazing. He's a, yes. He works at the seminary in St. Louis. He came and did a talk for us uh, d- during Holy Week for, for the priests of the diocese. And he was telling a number, a number of stories and was very, very good. And one of the things he says was, he has a friend who sort of would counsel him, and he would go to her like with some, you know, big issue, and uh-huh. and she would say to him, "Well, have you have you talked to the father?" <laughs> and I, I mean, I do this all the time, where I'm like, "No, no, or you know, it's not worthy of God, or you know, just have you talked to the father?" So in the sadness of whatever you're going yeah. through. Have you talked to the father about it? When he said that, I was just like, okay, that is like that's gonna solve most oh. of most of my problems. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and now I've been doing it. I've that, been doing it. That and it's Dorito so spicy Doritos oh, covered in chocolate. The chili, the chili Doritos are good. Too. <laughs> the chili, sweet chili Doritos and the dipped other thing, in chocolate. And I think you're really good at this, is like uh and, and again, this I'm not saying a cure every cure for sadness is this, but like Exercise, no, yeah. Um, sleeping, a good nap um, fixes a lot. Yeah, um, take taking care of yourself. Uh, those can be ways. Uh, so even like Thomas Thomas Aquinas actually said he he wrote he he called it. <laughs> he said one of the one cure to sadness would, is bathing and sleeping. Now in his day, thirteenth century, you know, bathing was not, <laughs> as, was not as big a deal. Yeah. As it is now, I don't, they didn't bathe as often as we do with our modern showers and baths and such. But just, just kind of take care of yourself. You know, are you are physically? Are you eating well? Are you exercising? Are you sleeping? You know, go to bed at a reasonable hour. Right. It's amazing what a good night's sleep will do. Now, again, I'm not saying a good night's sleep will cure your sadness, but that can. It's a it's a contributor. Yep. It's a contributor. Of like my, you know, my four things are number one is exercise, two is food, is two is sleep, three is food, and four is prayer. That if the first three are out of line, then the the fourth one, which is prayer, yep. falls out of line. Yep. And so like you know, eating eating something. If you're eating like if you're spending time in the junk food world of like after Easter, I was eating burgers like mm. in the octave every day, Oreos. and I felt terrible by the end of the week, but it was so delicious. Yeah, and so we just like. How, how is the sadness of us? Bathe and take yeah. a nap. So recapping, uh, the way out is through. You got to talk to somebody. Uh huh. Mourn. You got to mourn the loss. Have you talked to the father about it? I mean, have you really uh-huh. prayed about what's going on in your life? And then taking care of yourself physically. A nap and a shower. That's what you do when you're sad. If we can help you, I hope you'll call us. I hope we can talk. Yeah. Whether you're Catholic or not. Wherever you are, if you're on another planet, um, if you're somewhere outside of uh, Stillwater, we can try to help you with some local resources. One thing I'm excited about: hopefully, we're going to have some counseling Ooh. from Catholic Charities in Tulsa coming to Stillwater. Let's talk. Stay tuned for that, my friends. All right, hey, it's May, and we hope you have a great May. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We'll see you soon. Peace. <laughs>